The purposes of the United States should not be doubted. The just demands of peace and security will be met, or action will be unavoidable. What the, this name is mean, America. It's named bullets, tanks, war, uh, blood. Well, well, if, if anyone, you ask him, what you are feeling with, with the, this, this name, America. Its name is bullet, bullet, blood, tanks, damage, crash. Why did Mr. Bush insist the war? We are on a humanitarian mission to your country. We are individuals deeply concerned with the ratcheting up of the war rhetoric that has been coming from our administration. The majority of the American people are peace-wagering individuals, not war mongers. We in this delegation do not rule out a peaceful resolution to the current situation between Iraq and the United States. What about ties to Al-Qaeda? Our country has no relation at all with Taliban or Afghanistan. We, never, we, we have not been associated with any of the terrorist acts which have been committed in September 11. The U.S. administration is now speaking word. We are not going to turn the other cheek. We are going to fight. Not only our armed forces will fight, our people will fight. I personally will fight. Everybody will fight. Through negotiation and dialogue with the Security Council, sanctions could be lifted. Al concluir la guerra del Golfo, las sanciones impuestas por la ONU profundamente perjudicaron la economía iraquí. En 1997, la ONU permitió que Irak resumiera la venta limitada de petróleo. Las divisas adquiridas en la venta del programa Petróleo por Comida revivió la economía. Fue entonces que el presidente Bush amenazó la guerra.
Rockies take away George Bush's excuse, which is they won't allow weapons inspectors in, he'd be hard put to get any support for war. President Bush has said that whether or not you allow inspectors in, he still intends to attack. Uh, what impact does that have on your thinking here as to whether or not you might uh, offer yeah, we inspectors? We are taking this very ser seriously, James, because as I said, doomed if you do, doomed if you don't. If you find themselves in such a situation, if we don't have guarantees that this is going to prevent Bush, why should we expose ourselves to to foreign inspectors? Because they will ask, as I said, unfettered inspection. They, when they ask us to go and visit a military barrack and then expose the facts about that military barrack, how many tanks, how many anti-aircraft, artillery, etc., etc. Why should we do it, you see? It would be unreasonable to do it. You mean if you're going to be attacked anyway? Yes. Yeah. If you are doomed, if you do, doomed if you don't, you better, you better uh, don't. I, you know, I personally think it's unheard of for the United States to actually attack somebody without being attacked first. Absolutely. Un I mean, it goes against every grain of my learning, my experience in this country. The U.S. government still interested in doing the unfinished business from 1991. problem of the, the modern fighting, it's not fighting man with man. It's pushing buttons. So the, the, the human being is nothing. I oppose the regime change because I do not believe that the U.S. has any right into imposing on me a government. Desde 1979, Saddam Hussein ha gobernado Irak como presidente y líder del Partido Nacionalista Baas. Descaradamente, eliminó toda la oposición política. En 1980, Irak declaró la guerra contra Irán y utilizó armas químicas y recibió apoyo limitado de los Estados Unidos. Después que Saddam Hussein invadió a Kuwait en 1990, Washington y Londres lo representaron como la personificación de todo mal. The history of Saddam and weapons of mass destruction is not American or British propaganda. The history and the present threat are real. And if people say, why should Britain care? I answer, because there is no way that this man, in this region above all regions, could begin a conflict using such weapons and the consequences not engulf the whole world, including this country. The United States is the world's only superpower, and it has uh, all the weapons of mass destruction uh, that you could possibly imagine. And if it is truly resolved to rain these weapons of mass destruction down on the heads of innocent people, there is no power currently on Earth able to stop it. So such threats uh, have to be taken seriously. But they are rejected by all right-thinking people in the world. No weapons here, no chemical, no nuclear, no biological weapons, no terrorist center, nothing. Only parliament, uh, ruler party, uh, government, president. The same situation as in the United States of America. Vice president, the same democ democratic system. Why uh, kind of war here? In Kabul, Al-Qaeda. Here, no Al-Qaeda. In Kabul, Taliban. In Kabul, Bin Laden. No Taliban here, no Al-Qaeda, no Bin Laden. Why? The war against Iraq, only for money. Because here, oil, oil. I may have my own differences with my own government, but I will never, never accept a foreign, foreign imposed government to take control of my oil reserves. Well, you'd need Shakespeare, I think, to analyze the familial uh, reasons that might uh, be involved, the uh, perceived humiliation of the senior Bush, uh, his one-term presidency. Uh, but also there are very real uh, material interests in the military-industrial complex, in the small, hard-right faction who have apparently hijacked uh, a good part of the U.S. administration, People who even Ronald Reagan kept at uh, arm's length are now sitting uh, on the arm of Mr. Bush's chair. And these people have an agenda, 
uh, of world uh, domination. I don't want to put it uh, too dramatically, but they really do feel that full spectral dominance, to use their chilling phrase, of the globe by the United States is an imperative. I think it's better for all of us to live in peace. Only peace. Nothing, only the peace, you know? Believe me, the war, everything, all of these things, you know, you're going to lose a lot of people. The regime here is the secular regime. And the Iraqi constitution said that Islam is the uh, former religion in Iraq, but it's not the only religion. very good people and we have very long history. I know an archaeological site is in Iraq uh, bombed by planes of America in 1991. This happened in Old City and Old City was uh, the land of Abraham Prophet. The entire Tigris Euphrates Valley is the origin of the oldest uh, civilizations, the old, some of the oldest institutions. We're here in Babylon, which is one of the most famous cities of the ancient world, and uh, this is a replica of the famous Ishtar Gate, one of the eight gates around Babylon, named for the goddess Ishtar. And it was really colorful like this in its prime. Uh, there were two periods of uh, historical occupation. One is the old Babylonian period, which most people know the name of Hammurabi. But the second is equally famous, but even grander, architecturally, and that is the period of Nebuchadnezzar II, who ruled uh, during the Neo-Babylonian dynasty from the years uh, 605 to 562 BC. Uh, here you see one of the inscriptions in the Ishtar Gate uh, foundations, and it's cuneiform, uh, what they call Babylonian cuneiform, or uh, uh, Akkadian language. And this is the sign for a god right here, Dingir. And usually these inscriptions say, I, Nebuchadnezzar, son of Nebuchadnezzar, built this city of Babylon to the glory of my name and the honor of my majesties. Well, there have been a lot of regime changes in the history of Mesopotamia, Iraq, but it stays the same country. The people, the traditions, the continuity, the pride in their own civilization, it uh, remains. We know the difficulties of the war. I lost my brothers. I lost one of them in the war between Iraq and Iran, and the other one in the war in Kuwait. Why? We don't know why. You know, at first people seem pretty resigned. Uh, they'll tell you, the United States has been bombing us for 12 years, what more are they going to do to us? And they'll shrug. But if you talk to people a little bit more, you can really see how worried everyone is. Uh, I think they know that this time is going to be much, much different. And I think people here, after 20 years of war, you know, know what war means. They know it means that there's going to be bombing all over the country. They know it means that uh, everything is going to get shut down. Electricity, phones, water, sanitation. I think they know it means that a lot of them are going to die. We have to defend ourselves. What can we do? In 1991, 
bombarderos de los Estados Unidos destruyeron la planta de tratamiento de aguas negras en Bagdad. Las aguas negras plagaron el río Tigris con resultados dañinos para la salud del pueblo iraquí. El gobierno reparó el daño, pero el remordimiento entre la población es palpable. What about weapons of mass destruction? Why should Iraq give weapons of mass destruction which he doesn't have? To terrorists, who are those terrorists? You see, they are not his friends. They are not implementing any of his plans. Why should he give them so that they attack the United States, which is the most powerful country in the world? <coughs> And then, of course, the United States is going to retaliate. When he says that I'm going to make a preemptive strike against Iraq, he's contradicting, contradicting the logic of, of mankind. They're talking now about uh, peoples and children. Okay, Habibi, uh, children die every day. Why you don't care? As a rule, cancer is a disease of late adult life, apart from children. But we are now seeing <coughs> cancers in young age groups, in the teenagers. In the, the cause, 20s. The cause of the young people. Mostly is the uh, pollution of the atmosphere by the depleted uranium. You know, thyroid cancer has definitely, scientifically speaking, has got direct relation to uh, radiation. Leukemias and lymphomas, most, most of the childhood cancers are related to radiation, number one. Number two, as you know, the embargo has, since 12 years, malnutrition has emerged. Malnutrition equals low immunity. Low immunity equals more prevalence of cancer. Plus, the destruction of the infrastructure. We have got outbreaks of infectious disease, especially typhoid fever, 1992-1993. And scientifically speaking, especially in children, you expect to have malignant intestinal lymphomas 10 to 12 years later, because continuous stimulation of the of the small bowel with this antigen will. Uh, by the end of 10 to 12 to 15 years, you are expecting now an outbreak of uh, malignant intestinal lymphoma. People in your government, what they want from my government? What they want? We know what they say. From America to Iraq. How many miles? More What? than 10,000 miles. Well, what they want? In the history of, of empires, all the empires needed the good attitude, the good feeling towards it from the countries that they were under its influence. The United States of America is most hated than any time before in the region. You can find that in the streets of Amman, the streets of Cairo, Damascus, Bahrain, Riyadh, and the streets of the countries who have had very good relations with the United States. If America is going to attack Iraq, this sentiment or those sentiments in the Arab world will reach their climax. And there are two bombs to hit this place in 13 of February 91 at 4 o'clock early morning. And what happened when the bomb penetrated? Make very high explosion, noise and pressure and killed immediately 408. After four minutes, the second one burned everything here. What was the purpose of bombing the shelter? I don't know, but uh, United States in that time said we bombed this place because for military operation. So that's reason bombed this place. But after four days, the Pentagon said we bombed this place wrong and make mistake. And we have all the information apologize and said sorry how do you feel when they say i apologize we apologize too late too late 
And I ask you, ask also, why make another war? I ask always, there are no reason to make another war. I'm sure. In England, we say that uh, Iraq's move has shot the fox of the war party. And if you shoot the fox, you can't also hunt it. Uh, and that fox is now shot and dead. Uh, so we must hope that uh, the rest of the world uh, accepts this in uh, good grace. People good. Good people. You as a government, not good. Nobody hears the voice of Iraq. So what do you think is going on? <laughs> People, I think there is a great deal of a rapport and a great deal that the Iraqi people and American people have in common. They would rather see the fight against Al Qaeda. If there is an attack by America with the power that the American armed forces have, there would be thousands upon thousands of Iraqi civilians killed. Uh, and I think that's a wrong thing.